Hi, in this short Revit 2026.1 update video, we're going to have a look at some significant structural improvements and enhancements. We'll also look at a couple of the core technologies as well. Let's begin with some of the core technologies. So we've had the accelerated graphics preview for a while now in 2026, and I've had time to kind of evaluate this and try this out on several projects. And it really does improve the performance, both in 3D models and also in 2D views. We've now managed to improve this even more. So basically in this release now, we have 10% better memory usage and also 15% improvement over the original tech preview. So this is definitely going in the right direction. We've also got another update which regards the double click on the project browser. Now, as we know, if we double click a view in the project browser, of course, Revit opens that view up. However, if we've highlighted a view and then we click it again, the general approach there is for Revit to rename it as you can see it's doing here. And of course, that can be quite annoying. So what we can now do is edit that double click option. So to do this, we can go to File, we can go into Options. In the Options dialog, we'll select the User Interface tab. And here we have double click options. If I click on Customize, You'll notice here that we now have a slow double click project browser. And here, I'm just gonna set this to do nothing. Now, of course, while I'm here, you'd also notice that it's worth setting some of the other things as well. For example, when you double click on a family, you probably don't want to edit the family. You'd probably rather edit or create a new type. So it's worth going and reviewing some of these settings anyway. So that's our double click setting. So now, of course, if I do a um, slow double click over the view, it does nothing. If I now want to rename that, I can simply press F2, or of course I can right mouse and use rename. So that's a very small improvement, but something that will just help you on day-to-day -day using Revit. Okay, let's now get into some of these structural improvements. And we'll start off with what I see as one of the most significant changes, and this is gonna be how we generate the analytical model. So in previous versions of Revit, we had to rely on the Dynamo player to automate the creation of the analytical model. Whilst the automation was good in some aspects, in other aspects, it didn't always join the elements as we would have wanted. And, you know, I don't think it really matters how much automation we've got. It's very difficult to try and get every single building correct every single time. However, in this release, Autodesk have now created an analytical automation tool that really is quite good. So clicking on the Analyze tab, you'll notice here we have Analytical Automation. We've got our traditional one that uses Dynamo here, but we've also now got two inbuilt functions, so we can go from physical to analytical or analytical to physical. So let's run up the physical to analytical automation. Looking on the context tab, we can now see that we have several tools to obviously run the tool, but also to allow us to edit the tolerance on the plane or horizontal alignment. Now, how this tool is now working is it's taking into account things like grids and levels, and it's making sure that the analytical model is aligned to these levels and grids where appropriate. It also allows us to set several different tolerances as to how the analytical model can adjust. Additionally, you'll notice that the analytical model is then automatically trimmed back, making sure that everything nodes out as we'd expect. So let's look at a couple of the settings. So if I go to align in plane, we'll now notice we can set a tolerance in here. We can preview this. So if I click on preview, it's just going to go through and actually run the tool now. Okay, you can now see on the ground it's projected out all of these projections that we'd expect here, and that's looking pretty good. But again, if that wasn't, I could go ahead and adjust the tolerance here. If I now have a look at align to levels, we can see here, again, we can set a tolerance on the columns and walls, floors and beams. So what we'll do here is we'll just go ahead and run the tool. So we'll click on run. It will take a few seconds. It's going to go through some of those different checks that we've just talked about. So it'll make sure that things are aligned to the levels and the grids and everything is trimmed and nodes out correctly. And now here you can see this is run. So to view this properly, we'll go ahead and open up the 3D view for analytical model. And we can now see this is pretty good. So 
I've got a few filters set up here and I'm making sure that the um, nodes that are automatically joined are shown in green and the nodes that aren't joined are shown in red. Now of course on the ground here we would expect some of these nodes to be red and that's because there's no connection there or anything. However, looking at the columns here I can see that they have uh, protruded through the rafters here. However, we can quickly edit these using trim. So this was a feature introduced in a previous release of Revit and we can just go to trim extend to corner. I can trim out the analytical model just like I normally would and we can then very quickly fix these kind of irregularities quite easily. Okay, and considering the whole lot was automated in one click of a button, okay, it's pretty good. Okay, so we'll just go through and trim this out. Now we'll trim these and we can now see we have a really nice looking analytical model. So just things to have a look at here. If I go into the 3D view, you'll notice, of course, that the bracing is actually noded out to the center of the rafter over here, which we'd expect. All of the purlins are obviously sitting on top of the beams here. But going back to our analytical model, everything's in the same plane, which is what we'd want. And the same thing with the floor slab as well. This is a composite deck sitting over the steelwork, and you can see obviously that is now above the steelwork. But of course, you'll notice here that when we go and inspect the analytical model, that's in the same plane as the steelwork, which again is what we're looking for. Now, in the same theme of analytical automation, let's have a look at how we can now set up loads and load combinations. So we'll go back to the Analyze tab, and here we'll go to the Structural Analytical Model slide out, and we'll select Load Cases and Combinations. So this dialog was overhauled in the previous release of Revit, and now you can see that we can set a region and a country. So in here I'm going to set, of course, Great Britain, but again, you'll set your region as required. And I can go ahead and set my design code as well. So in this example here, I'm just going to use a simplified uh, code here, so we'll just use this one. And looking at this now, we can see that we actually have to go and configure some of these uh, natures over here. So this is my dead load, so that will be a structural dead load. And then for the live load over here, um, this is probably the industrial structure, so I'll say live category E. And now you'll notice we can actually automate the generation of all of the loads. So let's go ahead and do that. And of course now Revit will go through and generate all of those code combinations to our Eurocode example here. Now previously we'd have had to have done this in our analytical tool such as Robot, but it's really good to be able to do this in Revit because then if we choose to export this out to Robot or any other analysis tool, we've already got our load combinations generated. So again, this is on Autodesk's continued journey to have a full design and analysis system built into Autodesk Revit. Okay, so we can now see the results are ready. So what we can do here is we can be selective about which ones we add to the table. So you can see I've got my ultimate limit state in there, but I've also got the serviceability limit state as well. In this case, I might decide to have them all. So I can just go ahead and add those to the table, and there they are. Now, of course, although these have been automatically generated, of course, we can still go through and make any changes we want and manual overrides to these if that's applicable. Okay. So we'll go ahead and click OK to the Locations and Combinations dialog. There's one other change I want to show you, which is actually in relation to Reinforcement Bar. So here I've just switched the view across, and we can see we have some rebar in here. If I now select this L bar, as we saw in our previous update video for 2026, we can now actually see the ends of the bar over here. But now clicking this, you can see it reverses the legs. So that again can be quite significant for scheduling. So you can see I've got the A leg over here and the B leg here. If I now click that, I can obviously reverse that A and B leg. So for reinforcement, that is quite useful. Okay, so that concludes some of the changes to Revit 2026.1. Hope that was useful and see you in the next video.